What's up YouTube? I'm Tom and today we're going to be going over the basics of the smoke simulator in Blender 2.8 and how to make some stylized colorful smoke simulations. So when people are first learning Blender and the smoke simulator, a lot of the time they'll use the basic gray smoke color and the default lighting set up in Blender which is pretty bland and flat. That's definitely what I did when I was first learning. So recently I've been experimenting with some more colorful smoke. I've been animating the color of the smoke over time and messing around with different lighting setups. And I've been getting some pretty cool results. So I recently posted some of my work to Reddit and I got some good feedback and a few people were wondering how I created the stuff I've been posting. So I figured I'd make a quick tutorial on how I've made my stuff. So let's get started. Okay, so I am using uh, Blender 2.81 that just released a day or two ago, but any like anything 2.8 and beyond you could use. Actually, anything I'm doing in this tutorial will work before 2.8, but um, I think there's some new things you had to do in 2.8 and beyond to get the colored smoke rendering in cycles. So I would recommend using 2.8. Also, it's just, you know, it's got all the new fun features, so might as well. Okay, so I apologize if you already know how to make a basic smoke simulation, but I'm just gonna start from scratch for um, users that are more beginner. Um, so I'll delete the default cube. Let's bring in a monkey. And just hit the space bar, hit quick smoke. And uh, really just to quickly go over the basic elements of a smoke simulation in Blender. You're gonna have your flow object, which is whatever is producing the smoke. So in your physics tab on the object, we have that set to flow, which quick smoke uh, will do for you. Um, the box around it is going to be the domain. That's kind of where the smoke is being created inside of. So it'll automatically create a domain for you as well. The other object types are um, collision, which if you just want some obstacles or other objects in your scene that aren't producing smoke, but the smoke will collide with it, you can add that as well. We're not going to do that today. What we're going to do is scale down the monkey a little bit and scale up our domain and I'm gonna quickly just set up a little animation so our object moves through the scene um, you can do this as well or you can just have a static object just to kind of experiment okay so I have a quick animation of our monkey head just kind of spinning through the scene. One thing I'm gonna set is this initial velocity on the smoke object. It basically will kind of affect how the smoke is created from your moving object. The object will al already have some initial force as it's starting. I guess let's get to the actual color. In the flow object tab, you have the smoke color in the physics area. And I'm going to maybe make like kind of a dark purple as my starting color. Hit I while you're over the smoke color and that'll keyframe it. So now you can see that the smoke is already purple. And when I get to the end of my animation, I'm going to actually change that more to like kind of a magenta. I'm going to hit I again. And now you can see over time it's going to change from the darker color to a brighter magenta. The other thing we're gonna do, I generally change the temperature difference to zero. And what that will do is, it's basically saying the temperature of the smoke compared to the temperature of the air around the um, smoke in the domain. If the smoke temperature is higher than zero, it will rise faster. So this is gonna kind of keep the smoke in place and only the flow object is moving. Now we could click on the domain and we're gonna change a few settings here. Let's just bring that up from 32 to 64. What that does is it basically changes the level of resolution in the smoke simulation um, so you can get finer details. We're gonna do a couple more things. 
go down here, turn on adaptive domain, and that basically will automatically scale the size of the domain as you're simulating the smoke. That'll just make it uh, load faster, play faster in your viewport. The last thing we're gonna do is turn on high resolution. Um, I'm gonna change this noise method from wavelet to FFT. I'll turn strength up to 2.5. This is all stuff, like this isn't, like automatically the best way to do things. I just like these settings. They're gonna give it a little more detail. And what we're looking at in the viewport isn't necessarily what it's gonna look like when we're rendering the smoke. The last thing we're gonna to wanna to do is change the render engine from EV to cycles. I'm gonna turn on GPU rendering. And now if we go into rendered view right now, you could see that it's actually still gray. So what we're gonna do is go to shading tab up here. Look at your uh, principled volume shader and in the color attribute slot right under color, just type in color. What that'll do is allow it to pull the color information from the flow object in the scene. And now you can see that we already have some colored smoke in there. Uh, so we'll go back out to the layout view. I, I'm gonna do a couple more things. I'm gonna turn our Suzanne um, object off in rendered view. So right now in the viewport, it will still show up, but when we render out to an actual image, it will no longer render in the scene. I'm gonna delete our light, add in a couple planes, rotate that. Scale it up, and I'm gonna give it a emission material. I'm just gonna change the color to maybe a reddish color, turn it up to like three. And then the other thing I'm gonna do is in the world settings, I'm gonna change the color just down to black so that the world itself, there's no ambient lighting. And now if we go into rendered view, you're gonna see this really cool moody lighting right here. So right after this, I turned off the recorder and I changed the lighting setup a little bit. So what I just showed you, it's gonna look a little different at the end, but all I changed was the color of the lights and the intensity a little bit. So you can just alter it to work with your scene. All right, let's get back to the tutorial. I'm gonna move my camera. So let's move the camera real quick before we figure out the lighting anymore. Go to front view. Control Alt Zero on the numpad will change the camera to your view in the viewport. I'm gonna change this to like a square image just cause I like rendering out to Instagram. Now we can get back into lighting. I'm gonna kind of tilt this this way so we're getting more backlighting from this light. And then the last thing I'm gonna do before we go to rendered view is um, in the uh, object properties tab go down to visibility and I'm going to turn off camera for both of these objects and what that'll do is stop it from rendering the actual plane. If this were on we'd be able to see the um, mesh in the render which we do not want. And actually what I'm going to do because I actually like putting in a separate background um, after the fact. If you go up to your um, render properties go down to film turn on transparent and now this will render out with an alpha channel cutting out the smoke so you could put in whatever image you want behind it. And uh, when you saw me earlier trying to play through this animation, you could see it's really slowing down the further it gets into the animation. That's because it's kind of calculating the smoke as it plays each frame, which clearly isn't even close to real time. Up here in the top left, you can see it's one point like three frames per second just gonna go down further and further. What you should do, probably right when you start that I have not done yet is save. You can't actually uh, bake your smoke simulation until you have saved your project. So don't be like me, save that right away. All right, so I'm gonna uh, lower this down to maybe 100 frames for the animation both in the uh, cache settings and in the timeline down here. Just because the longer your um, sequence is, the longer it's gonna take to bake everything. 
what baking is is it is calculating the entire animation all at once instead of doing it on the fly. It takes a little longer up front, but once it's done, it saves those files and you no longer need to sit there and wait for each frame to render. I'm gonna bake this really quick. What I'd recommend is choosing an external path um, so that in case your file crashes or your system crashes, uh, you'll at least have the frames that have baked. All you have to do is create a folder and hit accept and it'll uh, save all this data into that folder. So now I'm just gonna hit bake all dynamics and wait. All right, and we have everything baked now so we could actually scrub through the timeline and you can see our smoke simulation. So uh, this already is pretty much all you need to know to make a uh, colored smoke. So what I'm gonna do is actually render this out real quick. So I'm gonna finish this up in After Effects. You can actually do everything I'm about to do in the Blender Compositor. I just prefer to work in After Effects. But if anyone would be interested in a basic overview tutorial of using the Blender Compositor, let me know in the comments. Okay, let's finish this up. Okay, so I'm just starting a new project. I'm going to import the image sequence. I can just drag this down into my timeline down here and it should create a composition for me and now we can just play through it and we could see we have our animation already playing um, I'm just gonna do a few things I'm gonna add a curves effect just to make the uh, colors pop a little more and kind of up the contrast kind of get some more detail in the smoke itself and then in under layer I'm just gonna add a new solid doesn't really matter what color it is right now. Just make it comp size. Hit OK. I'm going to drag that behind the smoke layer. And now I'm going to add the, a gradient effect. So it's just called a gradient ramp. So add it to the solid layer. We can just choose two colors. And yeah, I mean, I already like this look a lot. I would experiment with some different colors, but that is the basics of how I uh, have been making some of my smoke simulations. All right, so that was a quick overview of the smoke simulator in Blender 2.8 and how to make stylized, colorful smoke. Thanks for watching. You could follow me on Instagram at thomaslatbeast3d and make sure to tag me if you make anything using this tutorial. Also, like this video if it was useful and subscribe for more Blender tutorials. Take care.